Uh, so this is Glenn McGroggy here, and I'm speaking with Artificial Dissemination today. And on the phone, I have Shauna and Jamie. Hi, guys. Hi, how, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. A bit full. A bit full. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> do you want to introduce yourselves and uh, say what you do in the band, uh, what you play? All that sort of thing. Sure. I'm Shauna, and I do guitars, and I do backup singing. Jamie, okay. vocals, drums. Okay. Uh, backup singing, don't you do leads as well? Uh, no. Well, I mean, just maybe not very much. Really? Here and okay. there, whenever I, I'm just kind of learning how to sing better, so I don't really, no, I don't really do a lot of lead singing, no. Okay. Just a couple, maybe one song or two songs that don't have many words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can you give us a brief history of uh, artificial dissemination? Like when you started or when you got together and started the band, that sort of thing? Sure. I think we, we started, uh, started practicing together April 2013 and uh, just started the two of us and that's kept going ever since then. Okay. Yeah, one thing leads to another, and we just keep going. It's just yeah. So COVID's a bit kind of good because we it forces us to take a bit of a break, but we're still jamming. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to uh, go over the releases that you've put in so far? Yeah. Well, in the first uh, like, so we started April 2013, mm -hmm. and by June we had uh, we we recorded our first. Uh, seven inch, mm -hmm. and then so that was June, and the, but that never came out till November 2013. Okay. And that was called glare. And then that, yeah, the glare one. Okay. And then we did uh, take us to your leader, which was uh, 12 inch. That mm -hmm. was recorded. 2014. At the end of at the end of 2014, released early 2015, I believe. Okay. Um, that's the one that Jamie Silk screens all the covers for. Nice. Um, then we did, um, shit, we did the, oh yeah, we Big did Brother. Big Brother and the Dickheads, which oh. is a seven inch with, um, it's a seven inch EP with six songs on it, played at 45 RPM, so it can fit more songs. 33. Oh, 33, sorry, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 33. Um, and then we did, um, a lot of people were, were asking us for CDs and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we put the first three releases on a CD. And then plus, I think the Dickheads wasn't pressed yet. And we were going on tour out west. So that kind of held us over for a little while. So we did the CD. Um, we included some interviews in that as well. And mm -hmm. then we just recently released another 12-inch on vinyl old. again. And it's uh, uh, modern day peasants. Okay, and that's the one that Tarantula Tapes is uh, putting out as well, correct? Yeah, but Tarantula has a couple of like bonus tracks from our earlier stuff on there as well. Oh, okay. So it's not just the, it's not just the vinyl. It's like other a couple of other songs from other. Well, how many? Four songs. Four more songs. Four more songs from other vinyls previous. Okay on that um, so it's got a few bonus tracks nice um i wanted to talk a bit about uh the cd uh past present past present and future um not only does it include take me to your leader and glare and you said what's the other one called and it has and dickheads okay um you also have interview clips on it and uh some recordings from ciut that's correct yeah um, the the versions, uh, like the CIUT uh, session, that was, uh, some of those songs weren't even out then. So are those basically like a demo version or a working version of it? No, uh, kind of. Uh, well, we'd written the songs and we were playing them, okay. but we just hadn't recorded them for the album yet. So oh, okay. we just kind of were doing what our newest songs were at that time. So yeah, a lot of them weren't recorded yet for the album so i guess i guess that fills in the spot of future <laughs> yeah okay. well yeah and, oh, yeah, and a... dickheads was future too because mm -hmm. it hadn't been released yet oh, okay 
Yeah, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a pretty cool idea to do do something like that. Give yeah, a, yeah. People well, it was past. Yeah, it was all the past releases, and those were way past. <laughs> the future was the Dickhead ones because the uh, Dickhead's record wasn't even out yet because there hadn't been. It takes a lot longer to press a record than yeah. press a CD. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it, it was already recorded, and then we were going out west, so we thought we'll just press some CDs and, you know, and make CDs of everything that we have so far. And then there's also some interviews on there from, like, uh, some people who interviewed us out west on other tours. Cool. And out east. Oh, and out east, too, yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, how many tours have you done? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, out west, uh, 14, two or three, three out west and three to western Canada, and maybe four to eastern Canada, maybe. Something yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we went and played a couple shows in Cuba. Yeah, I was uh, going to ask you about that. Um, do you want to tell us about that? Because you you kind of did it um, a bit differently than most bands would. Um, you you took uh, some extra instruments with you and uh, left them down there, if I'm not mistaken. Is this correct? Yeah, we just, they don't have much musical gear down there. So I brought down a, a big, my luggage was a big acoustic guitar case. And I had a, a electric, one of my old electric guitars in it. And it was just packed full of strings and drumsticks and miscellaneous music equipment and pedals and uh, pedals and chords and all kinds of stuff that they can't get down there. So when we went down, we shared the rest of the stuff with other bands and then all the stuff that we brought down there ourselves, we just left it with them to use because the bands were using like uh, uh, like cables from their bicycle brakes for guitar strings and stuff. And oh, wow. all this drum, drum gear was... Uh, the sticks were all busted and taped together and some of the drum kits were held together with vice grips and bolts and stuff. So just whatever I brought down a bunch of stuff and just left it with them so they could get their gear kind of fixed up and have mm -hmm. proper guitar strings and picks and everything else. Nice. Yeah. And, and the, and the gear that Jamie, like the guitar that Jamie brought down, like they, all the bands kind of share it too. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Like they really share everything down there. Okay, uh, how yeah. old, how many bands are uh, in like down there where where you were? Uh, is there a, a big sort of underground punk scene or? Yeah, the shows that we played were pretty well attended. Oh yeah, we I think we met about like four or five bands down there. Yeah, there's a few dozen bands and a lot of them chair members and stuff. It's kind of uh, not really legal for them to have rock bands or oh, punk really? bands or anything. So, the so most uh, all the bands that are illegal, it's all kind of the same music scene. So whether you're like a punk band or a heavy metal band or a rock band or a rap band or something like that is not approved by the government, mm. then those bands all kind of stick together and play together and share share gear and venues, and so they can put on their own show. So there's not like really too much of a separate punk scene. It's just like an underground music scene of all the music that's not, it's not necessarily illegal, but you, they can't buy instruments to play. Mm -hmm. Like you can't buy an electric guitar down there, you go in the wow. music store. Mm -hmm. But if you were a classical guitar player or a, a, a flamenco guitar player, you could go into any music store and get your gear paid for by the government and lessons and play concerts and all that would be set up by the government and local councils and your music equipment and your training and stuff is supplied as long as you're paying the kind of music that they want you to Very play. Perfect. But if you're, yeah, if you're in a heavy metal band or a punk band or rat, like the one band we played with was kind of like a musically works close to like D beat or metal but the singing was kind of more like five or six rappers going over kind of heavy metal music. It was really different. And uh, so obviously they're not going to be able to uh, get any help. And they, you, even if you had money, you couldn't like just go in and buy, you know, they all did like tr drop D tuning. So they couldn't get any guitar strings for this stuff. So actually I had a whole bunch of guitar strings like that. So 
Mm. We were able to restring all the guitars. They're pretty happy. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that was just one of the bands that we played with. But the yeah. other two or three, like, they were pretty well punk rock. Yeah. Cool. And uh, Yeah, so, but it was just neat that everybody just kind of all played together. The yeah. Same show. Um, do you still keep in touch with these bands or can you keep in touch with them or what? Like, um, well, one of them kind of moved up to Canada and Spain and I think some guys stayed back. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, yeah, we're still in touch with them on Facebook here and there. They came on tour here once. We played with them in Canada as well afterwards. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Um, I guess, uh, COVID has really messed up uh, maybe some tour plans for you. Is that correct? Like, did you have yeah. anything planned before uh, everything went into lockdown and in, I guess when it all happened in March? Yeah, our record was on the press mm -hmm. and then it was, you know, shut everything down <laughs> like in March, right? And yeah. so it got delayed by, I think we actually got it in our hands at the end of May or June or something like that. I can't remember now. Well, it might have been April. It got pressed pretty fast because they only closed down the pressing plant for about two or three weeks. Okay. Oh, I thought it was and longer than yeah, that. I think we had it in April, but we planned to spend the summer, just summer and fall, just playing all around Ontario and then do a trip to Western Canada, a trip to Eastern Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, we had some shows booked and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. We had, we had some plans in the works that what didn't like have a full tour book, but we were already starting to work on our summer plans for touring the album because we knew it was going to come out probably in April or May. So we planned by around that time to be really active. So we just kind of started getting, we had a few shows on Ontario booked and we were starting to line up stuff for out east and out west. But then by the end of March, we realized like, oh, well, everything's just kind of on hold now. And it still is. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a, a drag, kind of miss it like everybody else does probably, uh, you know, but you can't really help it. So we're just doing whatever we can, like other stuff that you can do yeah, to keep it going. Mm -hmm. So are you, are you, and, and we have our own rehearsal space. So, and it's just the two of us. So in that sense, yeah. we are able to continue practicing at least. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that brings me to uh, another thing. I'm, I'm kind of a music geek. So, uh, <laughs> I, it always interests me to uh, find out how songs are uh, written with uh, different bands and stuff. So how does the song work, uh, the songwriting work with uh, artificial dissemination? Is it, is it uh, both of you writing like guitar riffs and stuff? Because I know you used to play guitar. Mm -hmm. um, or is it, or yeah. is it you, Shauna, who's writing all the guitar riffs and, or what? Like, what, how does this happen? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, me writing all the guitar, well, most of the guitar riffs. Jamie has brought okay. a few in, mm -hmm. and and I just play them um, like in my style, and then um, and then he's you know, and then he puts words to to anything that I write. Um, okay. like, I don't really write songs; I bring, just bring in riffs, and then okay. he kind of forms a song out of it because of the way he makes the lyrics or whatever. Mm -hmm. We, we kind of like, it's an evolutionary thing, right? We kind of throw in whatever we can and it just comes out the way it does. Right. Mm -hmm. Or Yeah, it's pretty much, I've had just like a few riffs that I knew would work really good for songs that we worked in, but mostly it's, yeah, it's Shauna coming up with riffs and usually like a couple, she always thinks of most of the titles. Okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then that gives me. Then I go from like because she always thinks of weird stuff like I like you better when you were dead or paparazzi stole my soul and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then I figure out like what does that mean <laughs> and, yeah. and make a lyric around her, uh, her idea for a riff and mm -hmm. maybe a line or just some saying that we have been thinking about. And then we jam on it. And then once we practice musically, practice it a bit and get a feel of for how we want the song to go and then then most of the songs I know I'll write a whole lyric out of it and then we'll kind of arrange it and put it all together too but then mm -hmm. Shauna's also written like all the lyrics like which which hunt on the new record was oh, yeah? she wrote all the lyrics for that one and she oh, okay. sings it oh. yeah but it takes me forever to memorize lyrics so I don't really do that very often like 
there's the other song that I sing that's called Fight, and there's just one word in that song, and it's fight. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not a very good, like, I, yeah, it's just, sometimes I just do that once in a blue moon, but yeah. But mostly, like, what the anything that I, any, like, any lyrics or any um, any riff that I bring in, Jamie always blows me away with the lyrics that he writes. Like I just love the way he writes his lyrics. Yeah, well, you have a very uh, clever lyrics. I, I uh... yeah, he's uh, excellent. I just for me, I just think I'm I'm his number one fan for his <laughs> lyrics. I don't know. Um, speaking of uh, "Wish That You Were Dead," is that about anybody in particular, or or, or is it a bunch of people no. all, uh, put together? <laughs> Yeah, a bunch of people I'll put together. And I mean, it doesn't really even make sense either. It's like, <laughs> I, I liked you better when you were, it doesn't even make sense really, cause, but it paints a kind of a picture kind of, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, just kind of people that you uh, would prefer to be out of your life, but they just kind of don't seem to go away. Yeah. Okay. And it can be for everybody has certain people in their life that you would wish they would just kind of, they're kind of dead to you and you wish they would just remain dead to you. Yeah. But they do seem to keep coming back. <laughs> yeah. And I think for that one, we kind of wrote a verse each or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So that I couldn't remember my verse. And so Jamie just sang it. I can't remember how it happened, <laughs> but it was well, I wrote, I wrote, you wrote the, you wrote the chorus. Yeah. And you wrote the last verse and I wrote the first two verses. Yeah. I think there was like some line I couldn't remember. So then you, incorporated and in, i forget how it went but I just yeah it's a really i have a really bad memory so anyways yeah it's a, it's a bit of an obstacle for me for words and lyrics and stuff like that well um well you do have really uh really catchy songs uh um do you want to talk about influences at all from uh, because I, I can hear all kinds of stuff like i hear I hear some 60s garage stuff. I can hear some surf stuff. I can hear, um, you know, early 80s punk, early 80s hardcore and some of it. I can definitely hear some problem children sneaking out of uh, some of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have really diverse uh, musical tastes and just whatever comes out, comes out. I'm just, and I'm not even conscious of it really for me anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, like I like a lot of, yeah, I like a lot of garage. I like a lot of jazz, even like 1920s mm. and 30s music, big okay. bands. <laughs> I like so much yep. weird stuff, you know. But yeah, it's just kind of a compilation of all the music that we enjoy. We put, we use all that stuff as like not consciously do, but it's just in your head. So that's what comes out. Yeah. So that's we listen to that, all, all that type of music. Like we probably since being in this band, we probably both listen to more garage and surf stuff than we did before. And probably listen to more punk and hardcore stuff before. So then that kind of goes into it, but I also listen to country music and, and like rock music and thrash metal or whatever. Like it's all kind of jumbled in there and in, the back of your mind so when you're just writing we don't like kind and it consciously think of writing any style of music it just kind of comes out that way and then the way we play it because it's just two of us and we've always played in punk bands and it just kind of has that overall influence and sound to the to the way we deliver it mm -hmm. it's got a very uh, raw feel to it and uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Kind of you're not going to do too much with just uh, vocals and drums and guitar so you oh, just you could, though. <laughs> do it loud and fast and yeah, and you throw fast, more yeah. more voices in there and it just adds more energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we even have a polka in our. Uh, we, we like to have like one weird song for every record. Nice. <laughs> that just doesn't <laughs> fit anything, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and and it just kind of comes up. We don't even mean to do it. It's just like we wrote this. We might as well throw it in there. Why not? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, because it's tarantula tapes, I have to ask, how big is your collect your cassette collection? Mine was huge, <laughs> but I lost a whole bunch of stuff in a in a divorce accident, so now it's rebuilding. <laughs> but I still have lives with lots of. No I've got quite a few, I've uh, quite a few cassettes. I have no signal on my teeth. <laughs> okay, I, I had I had a few quite a few cassettes. Um, 
but I, it was more like I recorded uh, mixtapes for my car, but I don't have that car right. anymore. So I just have all these cassettes, but I don't have anything to listen to them on right now. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I like cassettes. Yeah, they're uh, they're pretty cool. I uh, I've always liked cassettes. The, it's always been a uh, a good, quick way to put something out um, fairly cheaply. Like. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. so I started was, recording what? myself on cassette. As soon as I started playing guitar when I was 13, I had cassettes of all the songs I'd written since yes. I was like 13 years old when I first got a electric guitar. And before that, the band I was in was a Kiss, Kiss band when I was like 11 or 12. So <laughs> I recorded all the Kiss albums on cassette for our uh, Kiss cover band to play. <laughs> nice. So I've had cassettes ever since. I got the first little thing from Radio Shack when I was 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of started like that too. Like, you know, it was always, you know, it was always easy to record yourself. Yeah. Um, I was always the one in the band that was always recording the band mm-hmm. and all the rehearsals and everything so we could hear ourselves. And it was part of the songwriting process too. Yeah. Um, yeah, we still do that. Uh, we do yeah. it a bit different now though. Uh, we break out the cell phone and just kind of record it on the cell phone and um, yeah. ship it off, yeah, to, now I, off to the band. Yeah, so and, I, and, I, and I do have a Zoom player right now, more than a cassette thing, but before I used to do it all on cassette, right? Yeah. Yeah, when we're writing songs, we have the Zoom with us all the time, so we, we, we do the Zoom recording of our jams and then listen to that back to like flesh out the songs and get ideas and keep it fresh in our minds till we got it down the way we want. And then mm-hmm. for this newest album, we actually had to have a 16 track digital recorder. So we oh, kind of wow. rec- recorded everything in our jam room ahead of time and mm-hmm. just to kind of get it down and uh, just like, just to make sure we had everything, all our parts down the way we wanted them. Cause we like to go into a studio and record an analog on tape with in like analog on 16 track, two inch tape. And oh, okay. so it's, like fairly expensive in time because it's time consuming right yeah so we try to be really do our own pre-production so when we go in there to do it we have like a really good plan in our head of exactly how we want to do it and how we want to sound and we have a really good engineer that co-produces it with us and he knows how he wants us to sound he's done our last three recordings so when we go in there we can just kind of go in for a couple days and make a whole album because we've got it done all the work ahead of time we're not just sitting in there farting around making up parts for songs we pretty much have a good idea when we go in exactly what we want to do yeah okay, yeah so and i mean i i've played in like uh three piece bands four piece bands five piece bands like with those you don't have to like have everything like you kind of get everything down just by rehearsing right yes with with jamie and i it's like it's a little bit um, you got to think of a little bit more because you don't want to just play the guitar and the drums. You might want to have a couple guitar tracks, right? But not, nothing that's like you know so different than what you play live. It's just for the recording. It's got to be a little bit more special, you know. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, so yeah, we just memorize everything that we have to do, and then we just do it and forget about it after. Because then <laughs> afterwards, we just kind of make it more like what how it would how it sounds better live. Then we yeah. focus on that more. The more you play it live, you it kind of evolves again, right? Right. So, okay. Yeah. Um, what about uh, future plans for the band? Um, I know this, uh, this this new album. Is it an album or an EP? Where are you? Uh, I guess it's like, it's pretty much an album, but because it's kind of a short album, it's only like about, about 25 minutes long so we press it at 45 just so the sound quality but it's like 10 songs on it but you know most of our songs are pretty short like a lot of them are just around two minutes long Mm -hmm. and you know we have one song we finally wrote that's actually over three minutes long for the first time (laughs) i think we've never written a song (laughs) over two and a half minutes before this one but most of them are like a minute and a half to two two and a half minutes long so goes by pretty quick mm-hmm. okay and uh where can people check you out um do you, are you actually mailing out vinyl 
um, yes. sort of thing? If you go to our okay. if, if you go to our Facebook page, then we have a thing there for mail order of how we do mail order uh, from through our Facebook page, and then there's like a digital release of it, and of all our stuff is digitally released, and it's also on Bandcamp as well. Yeah, we have Bandcamp. We've mm-hmm. had Bandcamp from the very beginning. We started. We just started to have it the mail order. Like it's more for local. Like well, it's, it's for anywhere. But I guess the 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 mail order doesn't have like fees associated with it. Okay. Um, is everything still available on vinyl, or is uh, is the first one sold out? Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. No, everything. We still have copies of every release on vinyl, mm-hmm. and we still have copies of the CD that has the first three releases. And all the inter- interviews and live on on the radio stuff mm-hmm. in the new album is on vinyl. And then now the new album's on cassette on Tarantula with four bonus tracks. There's like nice. songs from, there's like the four songs are songs that were previously released on the Take Us to Your Leader okay. 12 inch and the Dickhead 7 inch. Okay. Those uh, four songs. From, from those two releases as well that is on the cassette. So the cassette's about half an hour long. And then, uh, yeah, everything's available on T-shirts and stickers and that kind of stuff. Nice. And that's um, and you do your own label, Seminole Records, correct? Yeah. Okay. Is, there, um, yeah, we, is it just you guys on that label, or have you put out any other bands? Or is there plans for anything? Yeah. Band? It's just us for now. Um, we've okay. been so busy with the band that we haven't been able to do anything more with it. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, in the future, we might do more. We have ideas of other stuff we want to add to it yeah. as well. And I, I know um, that we um, when, when you guys were playing shows, you had uh, quite the, the variety of uh, different records and stuff at your table um, for other games yeah. that you played with and, and stuff. So you're kind yeah. of doing like a distribution with that. So. Yeah, it's, it's bands that we've played with. Um, uh, so we just kind of buy records off them and then we just sell them at our table, usually for the mm-hmm. same price. <laughs> um, but so we we, ha- we do have a, a website for that just so people can get more information on the bands that we, it's like a promotional thing more, like we just want to okay. get the, the word out, you know, mm-hmm. um, about these bands that we're meeting and that we like and stuff like that. Um, and it's just, just an, an interest thing for us. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They're not really on our label or anything like that. Like it's, it's I think that's, a, there's too much responsibility yeah. there for, <laughs> for that, right? This their seminal distro box. Yeah. Okay. But if people can mail order that if they want to, we mostly, we don't really push that. But if they're getting, if they want to get a bunch of records off of us, then we, uh, like they can pick anything off of, there's a, there's a, there's a Facebook page that shows the records that we've gotten off other bands. And so if we still have copies of that, we'll, we'll mail them out now too. And then also besides the bands that we've gotten stuff off that we've met and played with and either bought records off them or traded records with them for our records, or also we have uh, pretty much all the, a lot of the schizophrenic records too from, from uh, Craig from Hammer City. That's his label. So he always gives me a bunch of few copies when he releases stuff to to sell in our box too. So we got a bunch of that stuff. I would just like to add that um, with uh, with the Seminole Records, uh, I really enjoy how you include lots of uh, lots of lots of re- reading material with your with your records. Um, you do the uh, kind of like the news um, paper with it, kind of like a fanzine. Yeah, the disc news. Yeah, yeah, we do a different disc disc dissemination disc news. With each release has some sort of uh, insert in it. There had been a little different format each time. One was kind of like a tabloid newspaper in glare, and then yeah. the one in the one in uh, tickets to your leader was kind of like a fanzine, mm-hmm. and then the one in Big Brother and the Dickheads is actually a huge poster. One side is like the cover which is a piece of art that Shauna painted. And then the back of it is like a huge sheet with all lyrics and pictures. And that's another disc news. And then the new one has a great big booklet in it too, uh, for 
the uh, debt slave with the lyrics and other stuff in it. So yeah, we spent a lot of time and and extra time and money to to put something interesting in each record. Yeah, well, yeah, because with uh, I you know, appreciate with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with artificial dissemination, it's like it's not only the music; it's like other stuff that goes with it. That was always our vision. Mm-hmm. You know, like written or you know, we haven't done any video really yet, um, anything serious there. But yeah, it's like all sorts of dissemination of any kind of information, kind mm-hmm. of like, right? Yep, it's always a good read. And mm-hmm. you've also, and, uh, you've also mentioned we're not just DIY; we're uh, DIY plus friends because <laughs> you get you get your friends in there helping you with all kinds of things too. Yeah. Yeah, we have like friends of ours that helped us with doing the the artwork on the covers and mm-hmm. photography and helping us least like put put the other stuff together. We do a lot ourselves, and then we do everything else with. We don't know how to do something, then we get we usually have somebody we know that can help us out with stuff. Yeah, like like the guy uh, for our, our last record, we did uh, we used one of the guys from Sago to do the graphics and then sure. this uh this girl from zero four back in the late 70s the first generation punk bands in the in toronto she did the photography oh, wow. um zero and then uh what else oh he did the cover oh yeah then there was a a, a hamilton artist who painted the cover nice. friend of ours so yeah we like to include people that we know yeah. well, i mean obviously right yeah. Well, I know uh, Casey was really, really excited about um, doing a tape for you guys because she was all like, oh, I'm so excited. Uh, these guys do <laughs> everything themselves. And the fact that they're letting us put out the tape is oh, I'm just so honored. And it's it's just so great. <laughs> so, yeah, um, well, really you guys have a really so. cool thing going because of the cassette angle, right? There's not a lot of yeah. uh, little labels that are doing that. So I think it's like and then you're all involved in it all the berry people like they're all kind of involved in it it's like so amazing right i love yeah, it well there's only there's only like uh six people in berry and they play they make up like uh yeah. twelve thousand bands i think yeah <laughs> but, uh, no yeah um they were like hey do you want to do interviews for us for tarantula tapes and i'm like sure and they're like what what do you want for it i'm like give me a tape <laughs> <laughs> They're like, wow, that's cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, it, it's it's fun, and uh, they've um, opened my eyes to a to a few different bands too that I probably wouldn't have um, known about. So it's, always, it's all around uh, a good thing. It's it's always fun learning about new bands and uh, just getting to meet people, and I can't wait to see you guys again. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, I know. We miss we miss all that, like yeah. traveling around and, you know, hooking up with all these awesome people that we, we meet when we're out there on the. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, it's just like it almost seems like it never existed. You know, it's been so long. Yeah, it's it's really weird. It's really yeah. weird. Um, yeah, it almost it almost seems like it's a, a big plot to just stop everything. <laughs> Like it's, yeah. it's, it's so weird. It's like another world. I don't know what it is. I, I, I don't know what the new world is. Go- I, I don't know if this, if it's just going to be the same or we just imagine it's going to be so different. It's probably just going to be the same as it was before with a huge gap in the middle. But that's what I hope anyways. Yeah. Well, maybe better, I hope. <laughs> yeah, with a few yeah. things that are a little bit better probably, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time and uh, answering my stupid questions. Um, no, no, you had great questions. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing you guys being like playing live again. And uh, are you going to do any webcasts or anything like that coming up to uh, kind of launch the new album, maybe? Uh, Not really. Yeah, but we no. never really do. We're kind of thinking, <laughs> kind of one thing we're kind of been thinking about if this keeps going on much longer, then we're going to probably start doing some videos. Okay. We're kind of in a transition now because we're transitioning to a new practice space sometime within the next few months Uh where we have a little bit more room to work with stuff, Mm -hmm. to work on stuff. Cause our practice room right now is like 
Uh, so it's a large closet, basically. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all ours, but it's like not in a convenient place for us to get to. And, and it's uh, like seven feet by 13 feet or something like that. <laughs> It's wow. great for two people, but you don't really want to share it, right? Yeah, it's I, so small. I and I mean, drums yeah. are so loud that we have to, like, be right the on top of each loud. other I and have your, your yeah. phone <laughs> put earplugs in because it's so loud. you got to turn everything up so loud to get it over top of my drums. Yeah. So I now I, I'm building I a studio. I in there with uh, Shauna's guitar amps. Yeah. 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 She plays guitar loud. Amps and a PA and, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to play soft or sitting oh, down. Yeah, that's okay. I can't play my drum soft either. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, guys. Okay. Have a great night. You too. Okay. okay. Bye, Glenn. Thanks. Bye.